Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the Getting Started with Pug tutorial series for hipstercode.com. And in case you guys haven't heard, but the Pug template engine that is used for Node.js and also in other places um, is actually formerly known as Jade. So Jade's project changed over to Pug and, um, you know, it's basically the cute looking Pug dog. But um, ultimately what it is, is a template engine that makes writing HTML a lot easier. So to get started, um, I have a basic Node Express.js app, and if you check out the beginning Node tutorial series on hipstercode.com, you can see from the first video how we got to this point where we have just a basic application running. We have the Pug View Engine already set up, and we have a Views folder which actually has all of the Pug files that we need. There's an index file here, and um, you can see from our app that index is being served here. We have a title and a message being passed back to the Pug template, and you can see that they're being used here. So the first things first when getting started with Pug is that if you want to specify a doc type, you just have to simply say doc type. If we go and we look at the code that is running, and I say inspect, you can see that the doc type HTML was added at the top. Now you probably wondered, okay, is doc type necessary with HTML5? It's actually an optional thing with HTML5, so it doesn't hurt to have it there, um, but you definitely need it for earlier versions, uh, uh, earlier browsers if you're trying to go backwards with support. We've already looked at the title, which exists inside the head, so the title is being set from a variable passed to the template, but I could also just simply give it a bunch of gibberish if I wanted to. So if I gave it a bunch of gibberish, you can see that it's going to throw an error message. The reason why it throws an error message is because this title needs to be in string format. So if we wrapped it in double quotes, it would not throw the error message. So let's put some double quotes on this. So if we surround that with double quotes and we refresh, it works just fine. Now you can see it changes the title up here. If we view inside the head, you can see the title is given right there. So that's how we change the title tag. We already see the H1 tag is just simply saying H1 equals and then the message. Since we're using Node.js, the message is being passed here. So this is why it displays this is a temp message. If we want to do a paragraph tag, this is a paragraph tag. So you can see that this now shows up inside of a paragraph in our body. So it automatically surrounds us with the opening and closing tags required for HTML elements. All right, the next thing we want to look at in the Pug library is how do we do anchor tags. Anchor tags are links in HTML and we use it like this. So href and then we give it the actual path to where we want the file to be open. So we'll say hipstercode.com and then the next argument after that is you just simply say this is the link text. So you can see this is the link text. If we click on it, it takes us to hipstercode.com. Now one thing you'll notice is that if we look at the HTML the way this is structured, the A is not wrapped inside of a P. Well, it's like, well, what if I wanted to put my anchor inside of a paragraph tag? You could easily do that by just simply indenting inside the P. And now when we look at this, there's one P and there's an anchor re um, embedded inside the P tag. So in, in order to embed items inside of other items, you just simply indent. That's all you have to do. Now here's another example. Let's use the list item. So UL is unordered list. So LI and we'll just say first element LI second element LI third element 
Now this does the unordered list with the list item elements. So when we look at this, you can see they're in bullet points, which is standard LI element. And you can even embed this inside of a P tag, which I'm not even sure to be honest with you if that's valid HTML or not. Yeah, it's really not. It tries to put it inside the P tag, but it, it's it's definitely not valid HTML. Now, if you just want a simple div tag, that's uh, you're going to see a lot of that. So our simple div tag, and then we can put the UI or the UL right inside there. Make sure we indent it. And now you can see we have a div tag with our UL elements inside of it. All right, so now let's look at uh, form elements inside of the pug template engine. So well, all we have to do is just say input name equals our name. Second argument is going to be its type, which stands for text. This is actually a default, by the way. So third one would be ID, our ID. And you can see that we have uh, an input. So how do we put a placeholder in there? We could just say, just like we did everywhere else, placeholder equals our placeholder. All right, and that, that uses the HTML5 placeholder. So you can see it has our ID and everything else. Now, how do we put a label for that? Because obviously input elements constantly have labels. So we'll say label. And the argument here is going to say for, and we give it the name of the label that we're looking for. So it's going to be our ID. So label for our ID. And... Yeah, that's really it. Now we need to give it the, the text. So this is the label text is the next argument for labels. And you can see when we look at this that you can see the label is for our ID. So that's how you do labels and inputs. And inputs have different types. So this is just simply the text type, but we could actually change this. Um, from text, we could just say password. And when we type, you can see the dots, which is the standard password. All right, the next example with Pug is we want to look at some of our tables. So let's go ahead and say table, and then we'll have a table row, and table rows contain table uh, data elements. So we can say label for, in fact, we don't have to give it a label, we'll just say label name, and then we'll do also another uh, data element here, and we'll do a input name equals name. ID equals name. So let's just, uh, we'll stick it to that. But when we look at this now, we now have a, a table format. And we could have multiple rows if we wanted to, just by simply saying, giving another TR with embedded TDs. This is a label, another name. ED and then input so you guys get the point so if we want to do any sort of uh, table element you can do that so now there's two tables stacked on each other and they're perfectly formatted all right the next tag we want to look at with pug is the format or the form Tag. So let's go ahead and um, inside of our label here that we created, let's go ahead and just put our form here. So we'll say form method equals post. So obviously forms can either post or get. 
and then we can give it an action and this is actually where the method should be posting to so we'll just put our um, you know just the, the forward slash the root domain since we're not going to really be posting this but form elements should also have a submit so we need to actually put our input down here and we're going to say type equals submit And then we can also give it a value, which is going to be the value that shows up inside the button. And we'll just say our value. All right. So if we look at this input element, we can now see that we're, we have it wrapped inside of a form. And we also have the input type submit. And that's why the button is here. If we submit it, it will try to submit the actual form to the URL that we specified. And this is all just standard HTML all right, the next thing we want to do is we want to look at how to link to external style sheets. So in my public folder here, I have CSS, main CSS. And since I'm using Node.js, it actually is going to point to the static URL. So I'll, I'll give an example. All right, so um, inside of our head, we want to do our actual link. So we're going to say link relation equals style sheet. Now keep in mind, this can be either single or double quotes. It really just depends on you. Um, href is going to be the actual static CSS main.css. So if everything goes well, it should actually change our H1 message to make it red, since I have one color in here to change the H1 to red. And if we refresh our page, you can see that Jade is now pointing to our static CSS file and it's now changing our our uh, tag to red. All right, now in the same way that we referenced the CSS file, we can also do the same thing with a JavaScript file. Let me add a new directory here um, called JS for JavaScript, and then inside JS we're going to add a new just um, main.js file. So this is just going to be an alert statement. Hello, hipster, code, and pub. And this will just fire immediately. So if I go to the index.pug, and just like I did with link, I'm going to copy this entire thing. And I'm going to change this to script and remove the relation because that doesn't matter. But I do need to change this also to source. I probably didn't need to copy any of that, but anyway. And now we're just going to reference the... Um, what do we call it? Main.js, right? So now when this loads, it's going to do an alert message. Hello, hipster code and pug. So that's how you reference external JavaScript pages using the pug template engine. All right, the final thing I want to touch on within our pug tutorial is a relatively common thing, which extends layouts. And that's a really important thing. So let's go ahead and in our view, we're going to create a new file, and we're going to call this layout. Dot pug. All right, and in the index, we want to go ahead and just copy this entire thing. I'm going to control X and I'm going to paste it inside the layout. So we know the layout has all of this stuff. Now I want to go ahead and just the form part, I want to get rid of the form part and I want to say block content. Okay, and then in um, the new index page we want to say extends layout and then we also want to say block content and then inside the block content I'm going to paste what we had and make sure it's indented and if we refresh the page now the reason for this error is because the index project or the I'm sorry the Jade project is being updated to the pug project and you can see by default with the ExpressJS engine even though we're using pug that there's a bug in the tutorial where it says hey we're looking for layout Jade which doesn't exist so I need to actually specify layout pug and this is probably only going to be a temporary thing but it's because the projects in the middle of a transition so if I say extends pug though we get the output that we want. So hello hipster, the script file. And now look at this. Um, the form element that we embedded shows up. But now 
we can use template inheritance just by using the extends keyword. So th this extends filled in all this layout stuff and where we said block content, all it focused on for the index page was just this piece. So you can use template inheritance to prevent any sort of duplication of your templates all over the place. So that's a pretty cool feature, guys. Um, the Pug template engine is uh, is cutting edge, bleeding edge, and this is how to use it. If you guys have any further questions, feel free to leave a comment. Also, check out hipstercode.com for more tutorials on, on everything from Django, Python, JavaScript, Node, whatever it is that you're looking for. There's probably a tutorial for it. So thanks, guys, and have a good day. Bye.